Welcome back to Lose Reviews. This week, prepare yourself for the most comprehensive review of a game that I'm incredibly passionate about, Super Mega Baseball. It's one of the greatest sports games ever and undoubtedly one of the best games you've never played. Stay tuned to find out why. But first, a word from our sponsor, That Tech Shop. That Tech Shop offers loads of reasonably priced PC and console gaming equipment with free shipping worldwide. From grips, to skins, to gaming peripherals and more, visit thattechshop.com and use code LOSEREVIEWS20 for 20% off your entire order at checkout. And now, on to the review. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with wrestling. I've even attended a few WWE events in my lifetime. My days were spent talking to my friends about the latest storylines in the schoolyard, while I would spend my evenings playing WrestleMania 19 or Day of Reckoning on the GameCube, provided there weren't any wrestling programs on the score. That channel was the only one that regularly broadcasted the weekly WWE events in my region, and as a result, I spent a lot of time watching it, trying to figure out what all of those abbreviations meant on the ticker that flew by on the bottom of the screen. Through watching wrestling, I inadvertently became a fan of sports. And because baseball seems like it lasts all year long, I inadvertently became a massive fan of baseball. Anyone who watches enough of sports television all year round is bound to become a baseball fan. There are 162 games in a season of Major League Baseball compared to the 82 game NBA and NHL seasons. It feels like it's always on. It's just a matter of time before you're lamenting on how your favorite team's top prospect has a high BABIP percentage and other jargon-laden remarks. And so while my wrestling fanaticism waned with each passing year, my fervor for baseball only grew more insatiable. I was all about the baseball video games. I maintain to this day that MVP Baseball 2005 is one of the best games of that console generation. Unfortunately, this was the last MVP Baseball title to feature MLB licensing and one of the last baseball games EA Sports ever made. And I was in for a huge disappointment when I realized exclusivity rights meant that the flagship MLB gaming franchise would only be on PlayStation consoles. While I was able to play MLB The Show 2006 on my trusty PlayStation Portable, I would not be able to play the definitive home console versions as I wouldn't own another Sony console until over a decade later. Cut to the summer of 2015. A very unassuming baseball game, one which I'd never heard of, appears on Steam. It was called Super Mega Baseball. And it was one of those magical times when you take a chance, a genuine risk on something you've never heard of before, but you jump in with both feet nonetheless, and that risk yielded a reward beyond what you possibly imagined. Metalhead Software absolutely hit it out of the park with Super Mega Baseball. It was a no-doubter. They crushed a Mongo Donk. Super Mega Baseball is an arcade-style baseball game with a surprising amount of depth, and it's undoubtedly one of the best games you've never played. Now some of you may not consider Super Mega Baseball to be a true hidden gem, which is a reasonable standpoint. At the time of writing this review, it has a sequel due for release only a few months away, and of course, Polygon named it as the sports game of the year for 2014. The game was first released only on PlayStation and during the baseball offseason, December 16th, 2014, which stymied the initial hype for the game. In fact, a driving reason behind Super Mega Baseball 2's spring 2018 release date is to avoid an offseason release, which the developers admitted was a battle that they did not wish to fight again. It wasn't until August 21st, 2015 that the game was released on Steam, and so when I purchased it, it certainly felt like a risk. Even today, it's criminally overlooked on Steam. Its community hub only reflects a little over 400 submitted reviews. Suffice it to say that compared to most sports titles, this is a hidden gem. I will begin to sing its praises with the following caveat. The art style is going to turn some people away. Take one look at the characters. It's plain as day. They're very strange. They wouldn't be entirely out of place on a show like Max Headroom or Jimmy Neutron. Since the game is unlicensed, the developers had to create a fictional baseball league from scratch, and thus, these beautiful little monstrosities were born. Luckily, every player can be completely customized, from head shape to gender, if the default designs are too nightmare-inducing. Metalhead Studios is rectifying this issue of weird player proportions with the next iteration, Super Mega Baseball 2, which features more realistic humanoid depictions. 
but despite the fact that nearly the entire player pool looks like they hail from Uncanny Valley, they have a certain charm that I hope is not lost in the transition to more realistic looking models. In the promotional material from Metalhead's YouTube page, I've already noticed some minor character changes to my beloved sirloins that I'm already resisting, but I have no doubt that, like anything else, it will become familiar given enough time. Most of my nearly 300 hours with Super Mega Baseball has been spent playing as the sirloins, the extreme power hitters, and I have grown to love the players on the team even though they lack any backstory or biography whatsoever. The charm of the teams and their players certainly won't be worthy of any serious emotional investment, but for an arcade sports title with a made-up league, they succeeded with flying colors. One way in which Metalhead Software killed it with the custom roster is in the names of the players. Baseball is well known for its abundance of players with strange or quirky names, and Metalhead seems to parody this as some of the players' names are amusing puns on baseball terms, such as Hack Liner and Hammer Long Ballo. Aside from the character design, the rest of the game features fairly standard cartoon-style graphics. The menus, however, could stand to be improved. A lot of time is spent staring at them when min-maxing players on your roster with endorsements, and they aren't so pretty. Everything is quite green, and the way the colors and font are combined gives me a Fisher-Price toy kind of vibe. Being that the developer is called Metalhead Software, you could probably already guess what to expect when it comes to the kind of music in Super Mega Baseball. Yeah, it's rock and metal. And honestly, it's fantastic, featuring grooving slow jams, fast speed metal tracks, and other intricate face-melting tunes. The tune that plays in the season mode menus is absolutely brilliant and is constantly stuck looping in my head after I've exited the game. Of course, the gameplay itself is fantastic. As mentioned, Super Mega Baseball takes on a much more arcadey style of play compared to the likes of EA Sports or MLB The Show. For instance, there are no pickoff attempts, no defensive shifting, and no injuries in Super Mega Baseball. You also can't trade players or negotiate with other teams. The teams themselves are divided into two leagues, Super and Mega. Each of the teams has a unique theme, a memorable roster, and a specialization, i.e. power hitters, contact specialists, pitching experts, etc. These specializations will greatly influence your style of play. This means that each team is stacked with players that reflect its particular specialization. This is a brilliant design aspect that really sets Super Mega Baseball apart from the other baseball games. Imagine if actual baseball teams stacked players who specialized in the same offensive or defensive abilities, even to a fault. One team might have an entire 9-player lineup that could charge the bases as fast as Ichiro, but couldn't launch it over the fence to save their lives, and another team might have a wicked starting rotation, but at the cost of fielding players that are a mere spark away from being dumpster fires, defensively and offensively speaking. My beloved sirloins, the extreme power hitters, sometimes get thrown out at first from the outfield. They're that slow. But they'll go fishing and golfing for hits outside of the strike zone and launch them out of the park, to the bewilderment of even myself. Super Mega Baseball features a season mode like any sports game worth its salt, but the season mode options are quite limited, owing to its arcade sensibilities. There are three length options, 16 games, 32 games, and 48 games. It doesn't seem like much on the surface, but 48 games truly feels like a long season. It achieves the same marathon-like effect of the AAA baseball games with their gargantuan 162 game seasons, though of course not to the same degree. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing, as a player may not be as likely to burn out on a 48 game season. After your season is finished, there really isn't any option to continue the dynasty, as with many other sports titles. Instead, the season ends, the stats for that season are wiped, and you can start a new season with the same team and with the same endorsement setup in progress. It's not terrible, but it would be nice to have that dynasty experience where multiple seasons are experienced with the same team seamlessly. It would also be nice if there was some development with the players themselves, perhaps an injury, a feud, or a trade, to shake things up a bit on a season-to-season -season basis. However, there is a system in place that tries to simulate the slumps and streaks that one finds in baseball, called Mojo. If Philly Jones drops an easy pop fly, his mojo goes down. If Hammerlung Ballo crushes a dinger, his mojo goes up. A higher mojo increases the rest of the stats for that player and prevents them from succumbing to the pressure of big game situations, which can lower their stats due to nervousness. 
It works well and adds depth to the game, but it could have been capitalized upon. But it seems as though Super Mega Baseball 2 features some changes to the Mojo system, including making Mojo carry over from game to game to a greater degree. This is but one of the many changes that make Super Mega Baseball 2 highly anticipated for me. The difficulty system in Super Mega Baseball is incredible. With 100 Ego levels, each player can fine-tune the difficulty to their level of skill and progress. Improper inclusion of difficulty levels and settings is a huge pet peeve of mine in video games. Consider Persona 4, for instance. Before the player has played the game, they are asked to choose a difficulty level that cannot be changed. Beginner, normal, and hard. I love Persona, but I hate this kind of design. Of course, it's far from the only culprit. Lots of games do this. I don't really know what to expect from a game before I've played it, and so how could I possibly choose the proper difficulty level? Even games in the same series can vary greatly in difficulty. Persona 4 on the PS2 was my first foray into the series, and it recommends beginner for those not familiar with the game. But then, being a more serious gamer than most, I worry that I'll just steamroll beginner since I'm very familiar with JRPGs in general. A difficulty level that's properly scaled and paced is integral to a good game experience, but since nearly everyone has different preferences with regards to what a proper challenge is, it makes sense to ensure that your game has that dynamic capability. Developers ought to put more consideration into this. Super Mega Baseball succeeds here, where many other developers fail. Speaking of personal preferences, one of the marks of a great game is being challenging, especially in the end game. Super Mega Baseball does not disappoint in this regard. The game will destroy you above 90 ego. If you aren't near perfect with your pitches, you'll get absolutely rocked especially by the better hitting teams. And if you aren't lightning fast at bat, you won't stand a chance against the pitcher with decent velocity. In my experience, the power hitter and power pitcher teams are the most challenging to go up against. If you're facing the Moonstars or the Crocodons at 99 Ego and you haven't warmed up yet or played in a while, you may as well just concede. They'll wipe the floor with you. And I'm not kidding. If you botch even one pitch against the Sirloins, the Wide Loads, or the Moose, you'll pay for it, in the form of a monster Mongo Dong in your face. The pitching in the game is perhaps one of the best, if not the best, pitching system in any baseball game I've played. For one thing, each pitcher has an 8-pitch arsenal, with breaking balls that curve so much they seem more suited to a game of wiffle ball. Each pitch can be thrown two ways, normal or power, which changes its dynamics, causing some to break more and others to increase in velocity. This adds an incredible layer of depth to the pitcher-batter interactions. And those interactions are the smallest constituents of game that exist in baseball, and they really polished it to a mirror shine. They understand that this is what a baseball game is at its core, and in polishing it, they've made their game very compelling. Most baseball games feature realistic pitchers with 3-5 to five reliable pitches just like in real life. Those games are great, but adding more pitches and having them break like crazy really amps up the fun, even though it is unrealistic. But again, Super Mega Baseball throws caution to the wind when it comes to realism all in pursuit of a fun game. Batting is a joy as well. The success of the batter depends on a few things, where the cursor is placed within the strike zone, their contact stat, and their power stat. For my first 150 hours or so, I relied on getting lucky with pitch location to hit home runs. I would place the cursor where I anticipated the pitch and hoped it would appear there. As I reached eagle levels of 80+, I realized this was no longer going to cut it. I started a new technique shifting the cursor in the zone towards where the pitch may land as it's flying through the air. This requires quick, snap-like movements with the analog stick, and so far, I've been wildly successful. Most recently, I eclipsed the 90 Ego Threshold season that I was having trouble with for a while, and won the championship at that. Though it is somewhat derivative of zone hitting from prior MLB license games, I haven't really seen a batting system reach these levels of skill depth. Super Mega Baseball is light on progression and stat tracking, but there is some to speak of. There is a progress screen that shows various stats across all of your season and exhibition games. Some stats, however, are strangely omitted, such as strikeouts pitched. The game also features leaderboards where you can see how both your season point totals and individual game point totals stack up with other players. My high score in a single game is a little over 1.2 million points, for example. There is also a board that shows what seasons you finished on which eagle levels, with three milestones per season length. The hardest one is completing a long season, 48 games, on eagle level 90+. This is a genuine challenge and will take quite a bit of time. In short, the game does feature some progression, but it's shallow. The real progression comes from your skill as a player increasing over time and constantly winning at higher and higher eagle levels. 
there are some obvious exclusions from Super Mega Baseball that ought to become additions in Super Mega Baseball 2. Firstly, some added depth in the gameplay. They already announced that defensive shifts will be added to the game. Pickoff attempts to curb base stealers would also be a great inclusion. But Season Mode needs the most work, I think. Selectively adding some tried and true features from other baseball games into Super Mega Baseball Season Mode could be fantastic. The game begs for a seamless Dynasty Mode, for example, and a Fantasy Draft would also be a welcome addition. Being able to trade players and negotiating with other managers could also add a great level of depth. Each season would naturally create its own storylines with players being traded in the league generally taking on a mind of its own. The league would be shaped differently each time. Due to the fact that each team has a specialty, i.e. power, pitching, speed, etc., they tend to feel a little too one-dimensional. Adding some power hitters to the Crocodons, for instance, would really balance out the roster. Of course, some would argue that each team having a specialty creates a kind of game balance in itself. Each team has their own style of game and strategy to uphold. The overdogs won't be hitting lots of home runs, but they'll be stretching a lot of singles into doubles and doubles into triples, for instance, and so that small ball style of play is their specialty. And this is all part of the strategy of choosing the overdogs. Shaking up the players and the teams would make the teams more balanced, but it may detract from the balance of the league as a whole, as each individual team becomes more homogenous. All in all, we need more sports games like Super Mega Baseball. We need more arcade sports games in general. Games like NBA Jam, Sega Soccer Superstars, NFL Street, NBA Street, and Blood Bowl. For whatever reason, these kinds of games have disappeared over the years. Some claim this is due to the lack of licensing from the major sports leagues, as they've become more game-savvy over the years and are now much more selective about bestowing their official licensing. Not to mention that licensing itself has become much more expensive. If your studio isn't a massive AAA behemoth, you won't have a good chance at acquiring a license. Thus, most developers won't take a chance making a baseball game that doesn't have the instant fan appeal that an equivalent MLB licensed game would have. Others have noted that the experiences one would get in previous arcade sports games have been slowly incorporated into the AAA releases. Consider the addition of streetball to NBA games or lifestyle type sim mechanics. These are features that were previously the main draw for other NBA games, namely NBA Street and NBA Ballers. MLB The Show 17 famously included an arcade style of play which very closely resembles that of RBI Baseball. The recent addition of the classic RBI Baseball as a licensed series is a step in the right direction, but many argue the game was made just to fill a gap on the new Xbox One console, which had no baseball games, and so it's not indicative of any kind of changing tide in the industry. Hopefully Super Mega Baseball is just the beginning and we get some more fresh arcade sports titles from smaller studios that can't afford official licensing. As Metalhead Software has demonstrated, you don't need a budget on steroids to make a good baseball game. Head on over to LoseReviews.net for more exciting media to entice your sensory organs, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.